You're listening to Life with Mary Walter. Life with Mary Walter. And welcome to Life with Mary Walter. James there drumming in the background. How is everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hello, James. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Apologize. That was my bad. I got a little clicky. <laughs> I think you clicky. Audio just went weird. Instantly. <laughs> Yay, audio. Seriously? Hold on. You got that. I'm on the, I'm on right the Is it still bad? Yeah, digital breakup. Still? Still. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Hands-free. It should be hands-free. It's hands-free. All right, let me figure this out. All right. All right. Um, Hi, everybody. Let's see. Let's see. I'm the the head. Let's see. Is that better? Oh, great. That's fantastic. Better? Okay. Yeah. Look at me troubleshooting on my own. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Boy, IT taught you well, huh? Look at that. Jeez. It's so exciting. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Problem solved. All right. If you're new to the podcast, uh, welcome. Please subscribe to the channel. Tuesday, this podcast, Life with Mary Walter, is our non-political podcast. Thursdays, Mary Walter Radio is a political podcast. And uh, same time, you watch the same way, 7.15 p.m. Eastern time. Now, we haven't had one of those. In like, we didn't have one last week. And we're, we, I don't think we have one. It's been like two weeks since we haven't had one of those podcasts and I apologize, uh, but we will actually be away on Thursday, but I'm going to try to do a podcast from the hotel room. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a shot. Like we'll it. see what happens. We can, worst thing that happens is we try it and it doesn't work, but um, I'm going to do the best I can. So I like it. Uh, if you uh, j just so you know, uh, uh, if you're watching, obviously, you will see the comments, at least from YouTube on the bottom of the screen. I will put the comments up as we're we're talking. But if you're like way, way off, like into something else, I'm not going to read it out loud. I read them out loud for people who are listening to the audio off of Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And sometimes they're like so crazy and don't have anything to do with the topic or whatever. And it's a fun, cute little banter but I'm just not going to muddy the waters with that. All right. So, so that's that. Um, okay. So if you are new, so two of our faves here, Al and Bill have a little contest to see who could be in first. And are you want to know who it is? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Guess what time Bill logged in and said, hi, Queen Mary. Time 645. 701. Nice. <laughs> Al chimes in at 707 with, damn it, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and a hi, Mary. And then Tina, Tina at 708. I actually came early to see if I could beat out Bill and Al. I'm at work. <laughs> she is petting the cutest dog named Tofu. Oh. The cutest puppy I've seen in a long time. So adorable. <laughs> Tofu's so cute. Al says, yeah. nice try, Ringo. <laughs> she says, can't say I didn't cry. Uh, have you guys in the background on for entertainment? Well, thank you, Tina. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Bill, the early word, uh, the early, early bird gets the worm. Oh, my buddy Pete. It is my honor to grace you all with my presence. Mary, hope you're feeling better. I am. I'll tell everybody why we did not have a podcast on Thursday, just in case you don't know. And you came looking and you didn't see me on social media saying I will not be in, uh, not be doing the show. Um, uh, Al says, I don't eat worms. <laughs> and Ron says, happy hump day Eve. All right. You know, that whole hump day thing kind of came and went like it was a big deal. You know, the, the, was that commercial with the, with the camel and work? Yeah. I remember that too. Hump day. Yeah. 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 Hump day. Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that kind of died, that whole home day thing. It's it did. I see the meme once in a while, but yeah, it's out. Yeah, yeah. So 
but Ron bringing it back. So that's a good thing. Good so if you are watching on Getter, I will do my best to read the comments that you leave um, as long as they pertain, pertain to uh, what we are speaking about. So very quickly, um, I told you guys on last Tuesday that I was getting my uh, shingles vaccine because I know someone who had shingles and wasn't that old when she got it. And it was miserable. She couldn't wear a shirt for like three months because it usually it follows a nurse. So it usually goes like along your back or, you know, it can come like down your face like this or whatever because it follows along a nerve. So um, I, so I, I got scared because so many people have told me it's so horrible and so miserable and it hurts like awful. It's like the worst pain ever, depending on how bad you get it. And you can have what's called post herpetic nerve pain, which means you have uh, that nerve hurts like you just have this dull throbbing pain for the rest of your life. That's that's something you could be left with. Great. And if it goes into your eye, you can have you can wind up with partial or full blindness. Great. Yeah. All fun. So I said, you know what? The vaccine's been around for like 20 years. It's not an mRNA, right? So I'm doing it. So I got the vaccine. First time I got, remember I told you like I got it the first time my arm was like really sore. Got it back in October. My arm was really, really sore. I got it this time and it hurt the, more the second time to get. And the reason it hurts is because there's a lot, it, it, it's a lot of syri lot of liquid in the syringe that's going in. So it, 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 it's a tight fit. Like, so you get that pain, you know? Okay. Yeah, sure. Same thing. You know, I've had injections into my joints and that's where the bulk of the pain comes from is because it's a small little space and you're trying to inject all this liquid into there. Right. Right. So I got it about four 30 because was supposed to be, we were three and three fifteen for our appointments, but didn't get there until about, we got there on time, but of course they weren't ready because the system, every time we've gone, whether it's Walgreens or CVS, they've always, the computers are always down. They can't find the information. You got to fill it out again. There's like two people working anyway. So it was after three 30 by the time we finally got our, our vaccines, whatever. So just, if you, if you make your appointment, just give yourself like an hour. Right. That's a little what so I got it. So let's say like four o'clock. I was home by four, like around six. I was like, mm, kind of tired. I'm not feeling. I was just like a little cranky. I woke up. I went to bed in footy pajamas because I, I I was wearing footy flannel pajamas last week, <laughs> and I have fleece sheets on the bed. Remember, because it was cold, right? It was cold earlier yeah. in the week. And and um, we we broke out the we have a um, winter weight German down, down comforter from Ooh. Germany. Oh, it's awesome. It's fantastic. And it's not super heavy, which is great, you know, but it's, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I woke up around two, two 30 in the morning, drenched in sweat, shivering, just shaking. So cold, so cold, so cold, couldn't get warm. And my stomach was all like, Ugh. because when you shake like that, you know how your stomach gets really tense. Like it gets, and then it yeah. starts to hurt. Mm -hmm. And I just tossed and turned and tossed and turned and, and I, I just could get, it was, it's just terrible. And finally like three o'clock hits and I, I was going to ask my husband to get up and get me a sweatshirt because I was so cold. I wasn't getting out from under the covers, but his alarm goes off at four 15. So I'm not waking him up at three. Right. Right. Because I'm not, I don't want to ruin his, you know, his sleep or anything. So long story short, he got up at like four, four, four 15, four 30. And I was just like, can you get me a sweatshirt? I'm so cold. And I said, I just don't feel good. I've been up taking Tums. It's terrible. I'm nauseous. That so um, mm -hmm. we took my fever, we took my temperature. Now he made me get up and walk around to cool off before, because I was under the covers and everything before he took my temperature, 103.2. Oh, oof. <laughs> He's like, oh, because he was like, oh, you're just having a reaction to the to the vaccine. It's normal, you know, what you're having is fine. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, okay, well that part's not. <laughs> <laughs> So long story short, I felt like crap for like a little bit more than 24 hours, 36 hours. And my fever broke. He's pumping me with Tylenol. And that was it. So that's why we did not have a podcast on Thursday because I was in bed feeling terrible, bundled up. And um, I think so that you're was angry it. now. I'm trying to imagine you all bundled up trying to do a podcast. And this government. <laughs> and <a> <laughs> government. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that's what we're on here. Okay. So later in the show, James is uh, on a job hunt. He said he had some stories to tell us about that. I was out and about amongst the people today. I will tell you about that. And uh, uh -oh. that's always fun. And we're also going to talk about uh, TV shows. But I want to start off with Gen Z. So a really interesting study in the Journal of Science and Medicine, which, you know, I get on the regular. Mm -hmm. And um, they said, wait, new comments. Uh uh, Ron, uh Rachel, Rachel says I went for my anatomy ultrasound today and I got to see him definitely having a boy and he hey. gave a thumbs up hey, hey congratulations Rachel way to go congrats little man that's so exciting good for you honey brand new mommy mommy to be uh all right so this uh, new study in the journal of science and medicine they found that people who were born between the mid 90s and the 2010s gen z are taking in far are partaking in far less risky behaviors than the generations before them. Heard this. They're, I love the mug. Uh, and there, so here's the thing: they say the change they think is a combination of school pressure, stricter laws, and parents, you know, telling them don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. You know, actually parenting much harder than our parents parented. Right. Um, along with some other factors. So I'm curious if you're watching, why do you think Gen Z is saying no to drugs, booze, and sex? I'm curious because I got together with some high school classmates um, on Saturday. We have one of our classmates passed away and he was oh. just an amazing guy. And so there were quite a few people who were there and we all went out afterwards and we were talking stories and it was hilarious we're just talking about the things that we did and got away with <laughs> yeah. and i i just it's insane what our elders allowed us to do yeah and and it was insane the way teachers talk to us like if you if teachers spoke to students now the way they spoke to us it's and james you're you're 10 years younger than me so one of one of my classmates was telling a story about how <laughs> He, he was a great athlete. He was on the basketball team. He was the pitcher on the baseball team. A phenomenal pitcher, played after high school, like really talented guy. But best I can tell, he spent his entire high school career high, right? Right. Yeah, and, yeah. His entire, and he was tell, talking about one time he was sitting out on the lawn up against the building with somebody else, a senior year, because they had, you know, so many study halls. And um, they the next class they were going to have was um, – was it was science class with this guy mr ducks and this baseball the pitcher was my lab partner and i couldn't understand why he always screwed things up i found out on saturday because it was because he had study hall the first and second period so his first class was third period in my my class my chemistry class right. chemistry chemistry and he was always high and that's why he kept screwing up experiments and i'm trying really really hard and i didn't know it and i'm like how are you constantly screwing things up <laughs> right is the, does the frog supposed to move <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so he's telling the story how he's <laughs> outside sit they're sitting on the ground and on the, where our class was was the second floor and they're talking to each other and they're like i wonder if mr ducks can hear us right and they're outside smoking weed and of course it's going to, and the window's open and, miss, and this this teacher stuck his head out the window he goes uh what is it first period fourth period great <laughs> so we're outside getting high. <laughs> but oh, nobody great. cared nobody, nobody cared. did anything about it yeah you know so it's interesting that it's because parents are you know are, are hanging over these kids heads that's why i look at some of the behavior of some of these kids and i'm like really i don't think the parents are hanging over them because our parents would have kicked our butts if we did three quarters of the stuff that these kids do like being rude to our teachers and we you know everybody was dr drinking age was 18 when i was in school Whoa kids are drinking Oof. everybody you could smoke in like you could smoke on the back walkway if you had your parents permission believe it or not you had to have a signed thing from your, your parents permission you got a card that you could smoke seniors like, kids are smoking pot i outside you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that stuff kind of like people are just like, a, and we, they allowed us to get into trouble. We got into trouble. But if we overstepped certain bounds of like disrespect, 
uh, those types talking back to, to teachers and, and uh, parents and stuff like that are they our parents couldn't care less if a teacher clocked us in school our parents would have been like well what were you doing I just just two music teachers I know one got away with calling like girls in the uh, I don't know the, like the drunk like the marching band like the uh, what were they, the you know the flag girls routinely calling them too fat routinely telling them yeah they were too fat without because any, they were no by the way no consequence none no. whatsoever but the better one was speaking of stoners uh we had uh, like symphonic band and wind ensemble wind ensemble is the better musicians so the wind ensemble needed a baritone player so we went to the baritone player in the symphonic band and said hey look who was a stoner complete just like your buddy stoned all the time always whacked <laughs> happy little you know baritone player so we told him look i need a baritone for this piece and worse is you have a solo so I'm, if you promise me you will do this and you'll practice and you'll get this down, this is your way up, right? This is a good way for you to get up at it when you shouldn't be there, right? But we'll get you there. But if you take this and you burn me, I will burn you. <laughs> I will burn you and burn you good. So we're getting all the way up to the performance and this kid is and just, it's not good. It is not good. And I could just see the wheels of frustration turning. But man, that revenge is best served cold. We get to the performance, and he's like, "Okay, I I can't I don't know how it's gonna go, but you're in." And we get up there and we start playing it, and he <laughs> he stops the piece and he says, "We're gonna start that piece over, but first I'd like to bring Brian to the front." And he literally like clears people out of the way, pulls this poor baritone kid who's already just completely crapped the bed, brings him to the front of the stage perfect spotlight spot and then we'll start again and make some suffer through this piece one more time blowing it in front of everybody out in the front and you could you imagine <laughs> that would make the papers nowadays that would be so bad to what you did to a kid right like, scarring a kid like that would be considered real on pc now i mean this kid was scarred but he, he's lucky he should have learned i get it but i mean he was scarred like i was huh? yeah he, he wasn't going to play baritone go. much after that, you know? <laughs> so so why do you think, though, that Gen Z is so different, like so different from the way you grew up, and they're not interested in any of that stuff? Not that, I mean, I wasn't a stoner. I, that wasn't me. I wasn't smoking on the back. I wasn't smoking anything, you know, period, end of story. But we yeah. went out as seniors because we could drink legally, and we'd go over to Duke Island Park, and we'd sit and drink and everything. Somebody always stayed sober to drive. And then we went back to school. <laughs> right? yeah. Like, yeah. They don't want to drive. They don't want to. They're not not saying you should drink and drive. Not saying those things. We were very. We always made sure somebody was driving. Um, but they're not interested in in any of the stuff that signified like was a rite of passage for us as kids. And I think you know a lot of the you know there's a lot of generations between me and Z. But it's just weird to me as to why that is. I think uh, part of it is there were so many things when we were younger that were just taboo or just, you know, you had to break a barrier. There's all these things we were trying to fight for free, whatever it is we were trying to get ahead of, you know, that it wasn't around when our parents were, you know, we we're trying to have more freedoms or more whatever. Kids now, they've, we, I'm not saying we've broken every barrier, but I mean, like we've broken so many things like drugs aren't as taboo as they used to be. It's not right. as cool to sneak around. Like, it's just not that, that sneak factor thing i think just doesn't exist like it used to right i mean their freedom is in the know. internet right they I, I guess i mean i'm just assuming their freedom is more like text-based internet-based video-based not what we needed we needed to get out of our parents house as quick as we could we wanted to get cars and drive we wanted to just that freedom of not being you know linked and watched every minute but now that they're i'm not literally saying, they're under cameras and surveillance and things all the time i don't know it's just not i That's think they found true. a new a new, they're new. They it must have some new version of taboo that they're breaking that we don't. And maybe that's what's I, coming in with with, with um, all the gender like things that that's the new sort of thing to be free about. Whereas for us, it was just the freedom to not have to listen to our parents and try all kinds of stupid things and make mistakes, right? We want yeah, to I think there, I think there's a big difference with going to the park and drinking and trying not to get caught. And I don't know, cutting your breasts off and you know, adding a penis on. Oh, 100%, I but I mean, line there. But how many of us took Ours was said, fun and games, you know what I mean? No, no, you're right, you're right. But I mean, think of like what like you were saying, like you you had your own version of fun too, but you were never really a big drinker or a big pothead. Any of that stuff wasn't you. But think how many people we know who it took a lot longer for them to learn from their mistakes, let's just say, right? I mean, 
Yeah. You know, we we gambled with our own versions of of things that have no that have big consequences. You know, yeah. we did that too. John says Catholic school kids did not talk back. Oh, ain't you right, John? That is so true. Uh, James A says, isn't it usually mostly the Gen Z that's inundating us with countless inane TikTok videos? That's a good point. And it, it goes off of what you're saying, James. Like, like they do dumb challenges on TikTok. Right. That they're going to they're going to sit at, you know, 40 years down the road are going to sit at a, a table with a bunch of friends that they used to know and talk about. Oh, remember that time I lit my butt on fire? Right. Like, like they'll talk. I guess that's their version of. So remember that time, Mr. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. But he's right, though. I mean, that you're right there. They have the, the, the this new version of their own craziness. Right. I love yeah. watching those guys too. The guys on the street that like to grab like drunk college girls and just see what they can get them to tell. But it's amazing. Like maybe your point, like one out of three, maybe even half and half are like, no, it's my first boyfriend or the, no, I've never had an ex. Or I mean, they yeah. seem oddly pure or oddly <laughs> far out of the, in the other way. But like that middle seems to be not, you know. The, yeah, but they're really. The dabblers don't seem to be like, huh? They're, they seem to be anti-social. Al yeah. says, uh, look at all the things we invented. This is very true. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like the inspiration for Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oof, if you only... Uh, Boy, dude. Sure <laughs> yeah. Al, I spent 20 years stoned while making aircraft parts. Oh, my God. Let's hope it wasn't anything important like the engine. Remember those F-16s <laughs> that crashed? That's Al. There, Al. <laughs> Al, thanks, buddy. Al, we followed there. the 60s. Yeah, yeah so he was on... So let's see what else they say That's here. Funny. They say today's youth Gen Z is overly scheduled and phone obsessed, and they're less likely to engage in face to face hang time with their friends. They don't hang out with their friends. So they're not getting in trouble. Uh, the findings deduce that drinking happens most at unstructured in-person social activities. 80% <laughs> of American 10th graders in the 1990s reported attending a rager with friends at least once a month. Hmm. Once a month when you were in tenth grade, a rager? What are you kidding me? Yeah, that's that's a little much. I don't remember attending that's ragers. Insane. Uh, first of all, okay, they self-reported this, so I think a lot of them were lying. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think there's a healthy dose I, of lying there, right? I, I had been to some ragers, but once a month, man, that's a lot of partying in high in school. Tenth without, grade, without your in parents tenth figuring it grade, out. Grade, you're what sixteen? Fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, right. Yeah. That seems dubious, but I mean, I, I get the spirit of it. I mean, we definitely, it feels like we partied more. We, you know, explored that avenue of those, those kind of, that's kind of outdoor fun, almost what we talk about with free range kids. We were just an extension of that mentality. It was always about not sitting home on this computer or, or watching TV. We didn't really even have all computers, right? I mean, you don't want right. to sit home and put VCR tapes in all day like that loser, right? To sit in their parents' basement and just watch TV all day. Like you wanted to be out doing things. It right. just felt lazy when I was that age to like be home doing nothing. Never right. My mother wouldn't let us do nothing. My mother would be like, if you have nothing to do, go upstairs. Oh, the infamous. If you have nothing to do, I'll give you something to do. And we scattered. We're like, mm -hmm. okay, okay. <laughs> See you. Goodbye. Yeah. Hey, my friend's picking me up in their car. We're out of here. We're going to the mall. See, we're doing yeah. something. We just didn't yeah. have the internet or the accessibility of things to watch that they have now. Like we didn't yeah. have iPhones, I I get it though. Think of how many times you can just sit on reels. Like I've I've sit on put reels, and forty minutes will go by. I'll be like, man, what am I doing? Like I gotta go, I gotta go do the dishes. Like I gotta do something. Like I gotta what am do I doing? Stuff. Right. It's you easy. Get get, I get why they get sucked in. Ad, uh, adolescent cigarette smoking declined more than eighty percent from ninety nine to twenty nineteen. I think that has a lot to do with just the campaign of anti smoking. You can't smoke here. You can't smoke there. They made it hard. I actually think that's a good thing. I, I think that that's a good thing. Um, yeah. uh, Ron says they live in a virtual word, world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Tina said she'd rather be with people than uh, be with people than talking to them over the phone. All right. So the data took studies from the United States, Australia, New Zealand, Great Britain, and 30 European countries eight, of, of uh, youth 12 to 16 years old. Uh, adolescent cigarette smoking, as I says, declined. In England, young people claiming that they have had alcohol within the past week dropped 25%, a drop from 25% in 03 to 8% in 2014. Wow. When I was like six, 
<laughs> you know, I'd be like, let me taste it. Yeah, um, exactly. Pot use, 35% of 15 to 16 year olds in 2019 said that they had smoked pot, while the number in, in 1997 was 42%. So it went from 42 to 34. About 20% of 14 to 15 year old Americans reported ever having had sex. It was 37% in 1993. That's why you get pregnant and wind up being a teenager at your junior high graduation. Um, they hey. say, what? Uh, real, quick, I was saying, I, you know, there might be something to that, right? You have a baby at 16, you bounce back right away. By 33, you're free in life. I mean, I, I think it might be not the worst idea I've ever heard. Yeah, 33 in life and trying to figure out now what am I going to do for a career? Because I didn't right. finish high school, I didn't get an education, <laughs> yeah, well, and know. now what? Right? There's some kinks in the plan. Yeah. Uh, a study cited by this journal said that today's students are more concerned about their future ambitions because there's more competition in for well-educated candidates to get into college and they see and they tend to think that drinking uh, is a hindrance to their success also they say initiation activities like getting a driver's license working a job are becoming delayed for the younger children. they're not doing it you had mentioned getting a car getting out of the house they're not doing that they're waiting to to do that now but they don't they say they haven't figured out why uh, let's see drinking and smoking and getting it on and sex have gone down in conjunction with not having a car more don't have a car more don't have cash and more and the other adulting responsibilities that we we did they're just not doing so while their parents may be after them their parents aren't aren't requiring them to grow up and i think that's a disservice are they i think not, that's a disservice are they not young and horny or are they just i mean I mean, well, a like lot the of that... car was a, a place, right? Like, right. We, got, we got caught in a back part of a parking lot that we thought we were hidden behind trees. And then we got the on the window and it was like three cops there and probably been watching us for God knows how long. You laughing. Know? <laughs> laughing. Like, well, you know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> But I mean, that's what you did. Like, you're, you didn't have money for hotels. You had a car. You had a car. You hope to God you had a car. Not the, now you had a place. Right, so, right. Like, it's just not um, easy. easy. Yeah, they also talk about um, the rules have gotten tougher. Uh, booze and alcohol laws passed since the 1990s have made it harder to get and to use both. And there's a lot of, you know, campaigns talking about the dangers of those things as as well. Uh, Al says, my grandmother would give me a beer and we would sit on the slider on our porch in the afternoons before my grandfather got home. Yeah, yeah. I was a kid. We would go to Germany to visit my father's family. And pff, what do you think they gave you? Because... The milk came right out of the cow in the backyard. And I was, if you've ever, it's disgusting. Disgusting. It's globules and a fat Whoa. and warm. And oh. we were like, Wah! and, and when you asked for a soda, they would put like a fruit juice because my, my father's family lives in the country in Germany. So we wanted soda, sprudel, and they would make sprudel for us. And they would put like this thick, like fruit syrup in a glass and then they'd spray the, the seltzer water in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awful. Soda. Yeah, yeah. So we lived on hot chocolate and beer. Boy, when we like would go life. over there, you know, so. That's beautiful. Yep. <laughs> I like yeah. that. I tell you like a good that? way to live, beer and hot chocolate, I'm in. As kids, as children, yeah. you oh. know, but it's the way it was. So I just thought that was so interesting that they're just so different and so not yeah. interested. And they're going to come out of school, you know, like it's it's almost like we become Japanese where their full focus is on school, 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 getting into a good college, like that pressure. I don't think that's good for them at all. We didn't they, have pressure. We didn't have any of that stuff. So, all right. Point. Talk to me about your job hunt. So... Speaking of what things aren't like when they were young, I was actually telling Ringo as we drove through, we had to go through, it was a circle and trail, it was a long story, we had to cut through a shopping center, right? And I found myself doing that old school thing where I looked to see a help wanted sign. And anybody know I'm looking for a job because I blew up my career um, and just exploded it in a, in a blaze of glory. Um, yeah, so I told her like, that's how you used to get a job. Like there were technical right. classified ads, but there was no internet. So getting a job was driving through these parking lots, seeing how one edge, you walked in, they gave you yep. a paper, piece of paper, just like yep. you fill out on the computer now, did you have to do for every dumb job on the planet. You had, yep. you wrote it out, you hand it to somebody, and usually it was the manager who was there because they were always right. there. 
And they looked at me and they said, yeah, let's talk about this. Or can you come in on Tuesday, six o'clock when I'm doing interviews or whatever it was. But I mean, right. you, you had some contact and a way to follow up and talk to people. And you can't do any of that now. Really? So How do they do it now? Everything is online and there's zero follow up. It's all hoping you get an email and almost if it's a major company, right? Like I've been applying for a lot of like management positions, assistant management positions, and all these things, right? But even that, it's still like, okay, well, like just happened today. We'll send you this link for like a 15 minute interview, like a pre interview, I'm sure, right? Like a new company or whatever. So they send you this Zoom link. Well, of course, the Zoom link doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Just didn't work. Tried on my phone, tried on my computer doesn't work. So what do you think you do? Like you think you can just call the company and find a manager go, Hey, I was supposed to have that, but there's no, there's none of that. There's no, none of that. So frustrating beyond frustrating. Cause now it's just a numbers game. It's just throwing them out there and doing it. Or the other of like, I, when you do try and follow up, they really do make you feel like, Hey, are you a terrorist? Right. It's really like combative. It's really like, Hey, I really? put this thing in. Cause I, that's what I've been trying to do. Like I know it's not the thing to do anymore, but well, let me see how it works when you do. And it's not worked out at all. I got one who said like, okay, well, when I'm ready for interviews, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll definitely look for your name and I'll give you a call. But all these people are saying they can't get help. Well, right. Cause and even the, by the way, yeah, they're saying that. All, and I see signs everywhere. And in every one of these places, like you figure if you're the manager of a, let's say I'm going for an assistant manager at Walmart. Okay. Okay. They can't just say like, I'm going to, you have to go through these like, corporate processes now the managers can't say yeah let me look at some resident it's it's really weird so i'll talk to a couple of managers yeah. now like how's this hiring thing work and they're like well yeah it's you go through corporate and corporate sends a thing and they pull the like ex it, it's really like it's it's not even at the store level as much as it used to be right it's just so you know finding small retail jobs or those kind of jobs are hard to find you know so god there's interesting yeah well it, it, weird it, it, i mean there's so just, and there's just been counts of these weird interactions that i'm trying to force <laughs> just trying to force them and they don't it, it's unmovable that's that's really depressing that's really yeah. sad yeah. um well it's interesting because it kind of dovetails with what i did today so like i ran errands today because like i said we're, we're we're going away this we're going to a wedding down in north carolina i'm going to try to do the show from down there on thursday and so I had to run errands today because tomorrow I have to clean the house because we have someone come and stay when we go and they take care of the cats and, you know, they stay in your house. So you have to clean it. Like everything's got to be clean, right? Yeah. It can't be the way we live in it. It's got to be like Airbnb clean. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, yeah, 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 yeah. so that's tomorrow along with packing. I got to get that done. And then they will arrive tomorrow night. And then uh, we, we leave uh, Thursday morning. And um, Al just put up a good point here. He said they may shut down that Zoom link when they hire someone. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? They may you do that, but they should at least tell you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So today I'm running errands. I'm running errands. And I had to go to Costco because it, like, it was one of those days of errands. So like, I'm going to go here and here. And it was like, oh, well, if you're going to be over here, let's do this. Oh, if you're going to do this, could you do that? Like, and then my list just goes it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I had yeah. to run into Costco and they didn't have what I was looking for. So I had to get something else. Cause I was trying to pick up food for the person who watches that. So there's certain things that he likes. And so I was trying to get those things, you know, to have them. And I couldn't find the, the, the chocolate covered car caramels, the sea salt car. He loves yeah, those yeah. things. Ooh. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find them at Costco. So I'm like, Oh, what do I get? So I got something else. Anyway. So I had like three things, four things. They had three checkers three cashiers three in costco and the lines are you know it, it was like it's like it was like the line at, at el paso at the eagle pass crossing you know across the rio grande uh on a saturday where and everyone's got the big cars they're you know, pulling one person had two cars so i'm like ah oh, crap so i have to go to self-checkout i despise self-checkout with an undying yeah, passion yeah, yeah, it yeah. is ins it is insulting as crap to me i hate it it is an insult to me and not only that but this one the one at costco it's always a woman's voice you know touch the screen da -da -da -da. You're, 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 <laughs> the one at costco she yells at you if you're not checking stuff quickly enough she's like please scan your membership card please scan your membership card i'm like stop it i'm getting it out of my wallet so I, my, so I scan it and then she's like, and then she's like, please scan your first item. 
please scan your first item. Oh my God, would you let me, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to scan this stuff. She's yelling at me the whole time. And I was so angry by the time I was done. Please take your receipt. Like, would you let me put stuff in my bag first? Cause I got to bring my own bag cause it's New Jersey. So they can't give me a bag. So I got to bring my own bag. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was yeah. so annoying to me. So I, <sighs> it's just insulting. It's so oh. insulting. So I ran some errands and I wound up at Target. I had to go to Target. So I go to Target. Target had zero cashiers. Zero. Wow. Zero cashiers. Once again, I have to freaking self checkout, which goes against everything I believe in. Everything. And they have one guy who's helping everybody, right? You know, and this poor guy is helping everybody. And I, and so uh, he goes, oh, are you everything okay? And I'm like, well, I said, I'm a little confused. She's like, well, I'm like, nobody discussed the vacation policy. And I want to know if you have a 401k plan. And he just looked at me and I go, well, since I clearly work here now, I'm curious what my benefits are. He was not in the mood for me at all, like <laughs> at all, right? And he, you know, he just like wandered. He like he, he had the typical. I hate to say this, but you know the body of that guy who's overweight, kind of schlumpy, didn't brush his hair this morning, kept pushing his glasses up on his nose, and he walks belly first with his hands like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like when they walk like this with the hands like this. You know, he was he was doing that thing, and I was just like, listen, he's working, which is great, but I just wanted to say to him. Would it have killed you to put on fresh clothes this morning as opposed to the ones you clearly slept in last night? Would that have been like too much for you today? But clearly he's hating life and and I get it. But he's working, so that's good. But here's my thing. If you're go if you're not going to have cashiers, you're saving money on their their salary, you're saving money on their health care plan, you're saving money on all these other things, right? You can't throw me like a 3% discount for checking out by myself as an incentive. Like you can't throw me that. Like they're one step away. The next time I go in, there's going to be like a big pallet of green beans and everybody's got to take in one thing That's and, right. and you know, talk a shelf while I'm at it, you know? Please step to the top and grab the stuff at the top of the pile, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and there's people like, oh, I don't care. It's just that's faster. And I was like, and maybe it's because I come from a state where we do not pump our own gas. Like there's a little man, because I got gas at Costco too. And there's a little man who pumps the gas and you can't, they can't take a tip. They're not allowed to take a tip. They get paid better than they do at like a regular gas station where they'll take a tip, right? Because it was snowing today and yeah. hailing and everything else. And so like, I like to tip them because I'm not getting out in this weather. So it's great. So I can get someone to pump my gas, but I can't get you to check my groceries out, which I don't know, used to be part of the experience. You know, it makes me happy when those I get one of those self checkouts. There's only one way I get happy and get revenge, like I did today. One dollar and today? seven cents in pennies. I grabbed in handfuls of change out of my car, as much as I needed to get rid of, and I dumped it all in the machine, and then I paid the rest, just to make sure I get rid of that. And by the way, there's no fast way to put a dollar eighty seven in pennies in. And the look of disdain, not only in employees' faces, but the line of people that are watching me go one. Two, three, 187 times plus some dimes, quarters, and nickels. Oh, yeah. I had like five dollars and change sitting in my car. I'm like, oh, I gotta get rid of this. This is too much. I'm not going to the shore anymore. I don't need it for the tolls. I'm like, it's gotta go. And it just feels so good. Like it's like an Andy Kaufman bit. You know, you're just putting the change in and people are just watching you. Like, you still have that stuff? Like, you have that metal that sits in the bottom of my floor or something. They're really they look at you like a weird old person, and I love it. Makes me oh. so happy. Could you make me do self checkout? Then fine, you're gonna take my dumb change. You got a counter. That's why it's there. Yeah, I've never, I've never used cash with the self checkout because I get so stressed with the dopey self checkout because it's it yells at you and to hurry up. I was in mm. all these. Oh, yeah. yells, the one at all the yells, and I'm like, I've got a lot of stuff in my cart and I got a tiny and you have to put it on the, the tray thing next to you. Like you can't put it back in the cart right away. You got to put it over here. And this is all piling up over here. And I got more stuff in my cart and it's yelling, please scan next item. Please scan next item. And I'm like, stop yelling at me. And I'm trying to balance the things in the discard pile. Like it's already scanned by them. It's so <laughs> annoying. So yeah. stressful. I it hate is. it. 
hate it. it. And, be, and I, and again, it makes it worse just because I so deeply resent having to do it. Like I so resent them forcing me to do this. So I'm that person who will stand in line. I did. I stand in line. I stood in line at ShopRite because I didn't want to go to the self checkout, which is down at one end. And I, right. the door I came in was at the other end. So I'm down at that other end. And cause they're going to North Carolina. I was bringing them Malamars and um, saltwater taffy, like Jersey mm-hmm. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So I had a box of Malamars and I'm behind a lady who was just, but of course had to split her. She had all of her stuff. And then she had the Jesus candles from the Goya section, right? She had the, <laughs> those were separate. Love those. <laughs> Love those. Yeah. <laughs> the Jesus Goya candles. Um, the bagging station is actually a scale and it weighs what you put on and make sure it matches what you scan. Well, that's great, Al, but when there's no more room on there and crap's falling off and I got to do something because then they should make it actually bigger in yep. order to put a lot of stuff on because it's not big enough. A checkout guy at my grocery store thanks me for bagging my stuff. Well, you know, back when we could have bags in New Jersey, my shop yeah. right had baggers and they were always people who were developmentally disabled. Right. And they would do the job and it gave them a job and they were the nicest people. They were so happy. and always gave them a dollar, you know, for checking the bill. Like, ah, oh, they'd be so excited because you gave them a dollar for bagging your stuff. It was great. It was nice. But, um, I, I feel like that's another rushing thing. I got to get my bags out at the bus. So I, I put everything on the thing on the, on the conveyor belt. And then I go down to the other end and I get my bags out and I open them because she starts, she starts scanning and whom, whom, whom. And I'm like, ah, and I'm trying to put it all in the bags and everything. It's so stressful. It is. <laughs> it's a nightmare. You get many times too. I've, I've forgotten that I, uh, I'm notorious for not grabbing a cart thinking like, Oh, I'm only coming to grab a couple things. <laughs> And 20 yeah. things later, I'm walking through the thing, like hoping to God out of the way in a line, let alone I don't have anything else. And then you're right. Like it's one thing when you're carrying all that stuff and you get to a real checkout lane because it's that long thing. But man, when you're waiting in that dumb line, you see like, I don't even have anywhere to put this stuff to check it in. Like there's only this little table here and then a vaguely bigger weighted table or scale as Al called it over here. Like I'm, it's just, it's all a mess. It's it's a disaster. It is. I don't and help I knew- it. I don't help it. But man, it doesn't make it any easier. They don't make it any and, easier. And, and for, for those who are not in New Jersey, understand what we go through. So because our wonderful governor, yeah. Governor Murphy, who's running for president because he got hair plugs. Did you see, you know, the plugs he's got going? Did you see the hair plugs? He's got the no. hair plugs. He's got like hair. He's got oh, a hair. Yeah, like, oh, plugs is running for office. And um, uh, so, so we used to have those baskets, right? Like the basket, if you're just grabbing a couple of things, but so many people stole the baskets cause they couldn't have a bag. So you, you like you buy stuff and then you have no way to get it out to your car. Cause you didn't yeah. bring a bag with you. So right. people were using the baskets, taking them out to the car and they never return them. So we don't have baskets in the grocery stores anymore either. We only so, have shopping carts. Now. Right. I noticed I haven't seen the basket in a long time and I didn't even no think of it. Right, just hauling them off and go, well, I'll return it tomorrow. They can, they did it with good intentions. They're like, oh, right, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll bring I'll bring it back the next time. But it's just like the bag that's in the we trunk of your car, right? Mm-hmm. You have to keep it. You have to keep bags in the trunk of your car now and everything. And you, when you bring them back in the house, you forget to put them back in your car. And you're like, oh, so it, it's just Notorious. a disaster here. Yep. Okay. One more thing. Cause we're almost, uh, we've got like 15 minutes. All right. So, uh, one poll, it did, uh, a survey was done, uh, that found that Netflix, even though they were having problems with everyone sharing passwords and they were losing money, which made me laugh because I'm like, how did you not figure out that was going to happen? How did you not foresee that? Like, yeah. You're together with a group of friends and somebody and you're at somebody's house. You want to watch something and they don't have a Netflix account or something. And they're like, oh, I got one. Here's my password. Right. <laughs> everybody's using everybody's password. Um, they they took uh, they're, they're apparently, though, bouncing back and doing well. Uh, over 2000 people responded to a, uh, a poll. And they were asked to pick their favorite TV shows of 2022 from a list of all the series they watched. All right. So all the series they watched in 22, what were your favorites? Uh, The number one was a Netflix series called Ozark. Yeah. Did you watch it? Um, I didn't, but I know of it. And I've seen so many of them in reels. I'm I'm sure I have to. It's really good. What's it about? There are seemingly he's like a 
bookkeeper or something like it does all kind of illegal stuff and somehow gets caught up with the cartels and then the mob or whatever and he ends up having to like do work for them in the middle of nowhere but it gets you know out of hand as particularly sure like that would be okay uh three other shows wednesday which is apparently about wednesday adams yep really mo, good. mo and inventing anna i know about inventing anna i've never watched it i don't know anything about mo but wednesday is really good is it like quirky it, gothic -y sort of things yeah it's cute is it about wednesday adams yep and the Adams family I, all make appearances in some way or another okay because we're little, we're we're still catching up on Mad Men, so you know we're a little behind. I'm, I'm behind on so many shows. I haven't seen Breaking Bad. And people are like, "What?" I haven't. I haven't seen it either. I haven't seen it either. Or Ozark. Uh, that was a popular show, and I, I missed it. I definitely will get to it, but I missed it, Ozark. I'm not watching. Uh, what is it? Um, Yellowstone. I'm watching any of that stuff? Oh, that's a good um, one. Yeah, but you know what? I I, I deeply resent that along with checking have self checkout because because of that show. But it's like I want to move to Montana. And so now yeah. they've all moved to Montana and they're ruining it. And it's not what it used to be anymore. And so it's really bothering me. That's what the show is about, by the way, is people coming and ruining Montana. I know. That's inevitably what the show is about. I'm like, that's kind of funny you're saying that. Everybody's moving. it looks great. I'm going to do exactly what the show is saying. Please don't do. Yep, exactly. But Californians are like New Yorkers. They're locusts and they're everywhere. And they don't think it's Texas. them. It's somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um. 26% of those who started the show Wednesday ended up watching all of it. It was the second most finished series behind Showtime's Yellow Jackets. Have you heard of that one? Yeah, uh, I have, but I've never seen it. It's only one on the list, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, so the best overall shows of 2022, Ozark Season 4. But listen, I'm going to give you the names and then I'll tell you the percentages, though, of what made it the best watch, because it just goes to show you how much there is out there on television now. It's not just the big three networks and Fox. Like, it's not just there's four networks anymore. Oh, no. It's there's so much. It's so diluted. Stranger Things was number two. Wednesday was number three. Yellow Jackets on Showtime was four. Grey's Anatomy on ABC. Oof. Inventing Anna on Netflix, Love is Blind Season 3 on Netflix, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power on Amazon Prime, The Last Movie Stars on HBO Max, and Married at First Sight Season 15 on a and &E. I watched that. Oh. Um, so I watched the, the tenth one on, on the thing. I haven't heard of most of the other ones, but the most best overall shows rated overall for 2022, number one was Ozark with 8% of the vote. It's yeah, only 8%. Big, yeah, it's a big thing out there. But it's, it's only, my point is, is that it's only 8% though, because there's so many shows, the mean. votes are so diluted. It's it's kind of dumb. It's to a point now, somebody comes up to me and goes, hey, did you see Twitchell's on the new Satisfaction Network or something? I'll be like, no. Like there's so many like new platforms, shows coming out on these platforms and they just take yeah. a you know they take off but yeah like yeah. think about it like like you said there's the big four three and then technically fox right but then you even had like the like a piece said like the pseudo sub channels there were a couple other channels you could watch stuff but not much and even though it's cable with hundreds of channels it was i'm not gonna say lots of the same stuff but it's not like it is now i mean these platforms just have hundreds of shows yeah. i mean so many shows and then people get into foreign shows you can tap that thing too now like i don't know, I remember in the 90s people being like did you see that german tv show about dancers i'd be like, what? like <laughs> you could never have that kind of access that we have now to programming you just go i know i don't even I know, know it's on major tv you said Grey's anatomy i didn't even know that was still on tv that's how little i know about goes on goes on about three six percent i don't have well, any idea what's on tv I just no. have like my little shows because there's so much yeah. it's almost overwhelming it's almost overwhelming if anybody yeah. by the way wants to share what they're like this is my go-to this is like this is what i watch the most of hubby and i watch the most of the 90 day franchise and there's 90 day the other way there's 90 day love in paradise there's 90 days happily ever after 90 day diaries 90 days where are they now i mean like it's non-stop 90 day fiance in this house because we've got to right. catch up with everybody but I watch and he does not watch Married at First Sight. And right. I do that when I'm like on Nordic track when I'm working out or something. I, I watch Married at First Sight and I catch up on that. Um, 
they also say the best unscripted reality series is on Netflix called Love is Blind season three. Okay. They're till they I saw an ad for them and they're telling themselves as the original um, you know, dating, you know, first <laughs> sight type thing. Okay. Uh the last movie stars on HBO Max, I've never heard of it. And it's an unscripted reality series. That's the Mary, point. that's the greatest line. Go back, can we go back to that line again? I know we all know it, but I love that line. If it's an unscripted reality series, remember when reality TV was supposed to be unscripted? That's what reality TV is <laughs> supposed to be. Like the idea that you didn't have actors or a script and you just watch these people willy nilly run around like crazy people. And now, like anybody who doesn't get it now, just remember when they knock on the door and there's a camera inside the house already, they didn't meet for the first time. Yes, that's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah, inside the house already. There's no. <laughs> Al says uh, Pluto has an old British show called My Family, and it's hilarious. Oh, I, Pluto! I'll check that out. I have. Oh, I don't. I don't see. I don't have Pluto. Uh, Pluto. Um, but like the Great British Baking Show is on here, season thirteen on Netflix. I do like the the British baking. Then there's Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls. So you can't pay me to watch that. I like Lizzo, um, but I don't know if I want to watch out for the big girls, but I like Lizzo. I do not like her because there's not like, you can't, you can't criticize her for anything. She is above criticism because she's black, she's a woman, and she's of size. I, I mean, at that. what point do you look at somebody and go, this isn't healthy? I just listen to tunes. <laughs> this always going back to our politics and music thing, right? I just listen to music. I don't know. I don't know what yeah. dumb stuff she says or what craziness she does. I just know she's a Juilliard trained musician who's right to really catch his songs yeah i i just i but I, I, think, I know you mean like that stuff could be off-putting it's probably why i avoid it you don't need the rest of the stuff if you're talented i don't think right i don't, I don't know, know. Like, I think it's a let your music I mean, let your art speak for itself without you having to draw attention to yourself by being a crazy person i wonder if that's the only way you cut through in a modern world right like i mean even the, even like like look at lady gaga talented writer did all that figured you know put on some meat dresses the next thing you know she's super popular and then she gets to sing with tony bennett like that's the maybe the trade-off is you got to do something really crazy and wild to get the fan base and then I, you're there because i think all these I, people I, mellow out you know lady gaga doesn't wear meat dresses anymore either right i mean right you know that she shows well, her way to break in i mean there's not many right. Madonna's left, right? People are just that wacky till they die. <laughs> and even she's toned it down a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, she, but but at some point you become a parody of yourself. Like Madonna has become like a Madonna, parody of yeah. herself, right? She's become That's a parody right. of herself. Mm -hmm. um, it's like that new Sam Smith video. If anybody's seen, it, it's it's like it's just a circus of freaks. I'm like, what the holy hell is this? It's it's just like you don't listen to the music because it is such a a freak show. That you're not listening to the music. I'm like, that's really sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so, I don't think so most I, people, I think most people, by the way, go back, we'll circle back to Lizzo. I'll bet you tons of people are 100% turned off to her and never even really realized, or, or they heard one piece of one song or just autumn. And that, there's a few artists that way out there that are like secretly really talented and you just don't know it because they do all these crazy things, right? And how many people I think just get put off to that and never get into a sometimes really talented artist because of the nonsense. Well, to your point, um, years ago, it's God, it's been, it's been ten, over 10 years. I was, when I was on Fox TV, when I was on the Fox news channel, um, this woman whose publisher saw me on Hannity a bunch of times, thought I was really talented. Thank you. Somebody did. And um, she happened to know my agent. She was talking to my agent. She said, Hey, do you happen to know blah, 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 blah. And at the time, this woman was not my agent. We were just friends. And she said, yeah, I do. So she hooked me up with her. So I go into this publishing house in New York and very few, very few publishing houses in New York want to publish conservative authors. Right. right. But she said she, and I talked to her and she said, you know, cause she wanted me to write a book. And she said, but here's the thing. You're too middle of the road. You've got to turn it up. You've got to turn up the crazy. You've got to be way, way, way more to the right. And you got to really, and I was like, it's not who I am. Right. Right. It's just not who I am. And I'm not that partisan hack. If I think that, you know, at the time, you know, Obama did something right, I'm going to say Obama did something right. Just like if I think Trump did something wrong, I would say Trump did something wrong. You know, like I, yeah. I, I in my opinion. And so it, it, I never did it. I didn't take her up on the offer just because I'm not going to be crazy for crazy sake. I'm not going to be disingenuous 
just to turn up the crazy to get attention to sell books. So it'd be the same thing for me. These artists are choosing to turn up the crazy yeah. and not really be who they are in order to sell a record. Look at, well, take it out of that. Look at Gordon Ramsay. He's said numerous times, and you can watch it just by watching Kitchen Nightmares, European versus American. In the American version, they, he said the producers want him to ramp up the anger and ramp up the crazy and really dial that up. And then when you see the European version, you're like, oh, okay, he's a chef who knows how to mix it up, but he's not the psycho he is on American TV, right? He's, you know, calmer yeah. more, and smarter about his advice. I'm not saying he gives bad advice in America. I'm saying in America, it's all about ramping it up and throwing a plate or screaming right. and being just as wild as you can be. Where in England, he just gets mad for people being dumb. I mean, like you can see the difference in the temperaments, you know, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, it's just, just goes to show you how, like you said, artists or reality TV, they think they're always trying to ramp things up, especially here. It's all about ramping it up and making it, you know. It's exhausting. Right. Can I just say it's exhausting? Yeah, I would imagine it so. Can you imagine having to be like that? I can't even imagine. I'm already a but, dumb dumb. I don't have to ramp up the dummy anymore. <laughs> But it, it's not just, it, it's exhausting just cons trying to consume any of this stuff is exhausting now. You know, like yeah. politics is crazy. You know, that's ramped up. You know, TV mm -hmm. is ramped up. You know, music videos are insane. Like, you can't even just sit back and, like, watch MTV anymore, which I don't even know, think they do music. Do they do music they anymore? No. Okay, they don't. Literally don't. Any more than but TLC I is about learning. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the learning channel is hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honey boo boo. Um, <laughs> but but it, I don't know. Like like it's just so much. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I well, control. like it, look at like it, TV's different for us too. I know younger people are used to it, and I've gotten onto the premise. But you know, I cut that cable. But man, when you cut that cable, you got to learn a new way to watch TV. It's you know, appointment TV was good for a reason. It's sort of like. How bad we thought the record keepers were in the record business. We thought all that was bad and what they're doing. But then you remember, like, they were giving you at least some attempts at quality. And there was, like, a, a system where you could find things and get things. It's like that TV. Like, streaming is the wild west. You really got to search and look and know. Like you said, or just have a group of shows. or a, if There's no, no way spoon feeding you stuff anymore. You know, it's hard to have a show as successful as like a Seinfeld when there's not only right. so much, but nobody pushing anything. Like almost nothing is pushed hard. It's all just out there. So here's here's where I I think we kind of bring this to what we first started talking out about with Gen Z and how they are they're not into like the 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 societal norms, like like the life milestones that every generation before them had, and they don't care about getting their license. They don't care about these things that used to be milestones. And I think that's because because there's so much out there to consume, we yeah. don't have societal experiences anymore. Right. You know, okay, 9-11 was a societal experience, obviously, right? But as a society, we don't have societal experiences anymore. I think like the last big one, as far as like TV, a cultural experience, like a cultural, was Sopranos. Like Sopranos, yeah. everybody watched Sopranos. You were going to work on Monday morning, everybody was talking about it everybody knew what it was right like mm -hmm. that was a big cultural experience that everybody had yeah. pretty much and I, when I, obviously i don't mean literally everybody no. um but but for the most part and you watched it every sunday that's what you did and i maybe it's because in new jersey everything stopped on sunday nights when sopranos came on don't 100%. call me on the phone don't do that there's nobody on the road everybody was watching sopranos right and and if you go back before that like growing up when we were kids we all watched the same saturday morning cartoons because that's all that there was that's it that's all you had in the car we all listened to the same music because you couldn't sit in the back seat and listen to what you wanted to listen to and your brother's listening to what he wants to listen to and your parents are listening to something else you all listened to the same thing so you had those cultural things that brought you together but you've got the most popular show according to this um survey the best overall show the number one only got eight percent of the vote and that was number one yeah it goes that way in the music business too um i, I was just heard an interview with a guitar player named steve luthiker that's toto you know rosanna and the hold the line that band the famous studio guitarist he's on thriller uh, michael jackson anyway it doesn't matter 
point is he was talking about when Toto was in trouble, the record company told him they have to do better because they'd only sold 8 million records. Can you imagine an artist now selling 8? That's what he's saying. Like nobody now sells 8 million. They were in trouble with their record deal in 1982 for only selling 8 million copies. And their record company was like, come on, you got to really, let's, let's, let's make this next one a real blockbuster here. 8 million wow. copies right now would be bonkers for any, any artist to sell for their album. Anybody. The yeah, best artists absolutely. you know right now don't sell eight million records regularly. That's cr yeah, that's crazy. Bruce well, nobody do buy nobody buys actual records anymore, right? right? Yeah, nobody Which, downloads the whole album thing. or yeah, you stream yeah, it. Yeah, but you right download right. it and it's on your device. Like I want to have something in my hand. It's why I hate Kindles, like, and I hate eBooks. Yeah, I bought. I want. I bought it. I, I where it, it's where is it? It should be tangible. You know, yeah. <laughs> it should be a thing. All right, we're up against the clock here. I have one thing to share with you, okay? All one right. thing to share with you. So you know how um, Hubby and I are infamously frugal, like, and I'm way more so than he is. So I have this pair of slippers. Remember I showed you the hole in the bottom of my slippers? Yeah, 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 earlier, yeah. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right, okay. This. So the left one has a little bit of a hole in it, like right there, but it's, it's getting there, right? But it's not that bad. So I was thinking, because I have, I wanted to make it through the season with this, um, the, the pair that I have on now, make it through this, this, this uh, winter. And I'm like, okay, I've really got to make it to like March, right? With the winter slippers. Then I can slide into the like, not so important, right? I don't think I'm going to make it. Oh, <laughs> no. Mm, nope. It was a good attempt, but yeah, that, 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 so, that giant hole up there about a big toe, that's a super deal. Like, like yeah, yeah, that's a good one right there. Yeah, yeah. They're... So I, I told my hubby, I'm like, and I'm dead serious. I'm like, I'll get like a piece of cardboard and put it in the duct tape. Yeah. Because I, that's what he said. But he knows I'll fall if we put duct if we put duct tape on this. I'll fall. Like, and I'm, that's that's going to be an ER visit. So mm -hmm. I hate throwing them out when the left one is still good. Like I feel bad throwing them out because this one's disintegrated, but this one's still wearable. So I feel badly throwing it out. Boy, that is frugal. <laughs> I know, right? Like it's it's insane. I was just That's like, classic, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I could put a piece of cardboard in there. <laughs> My husband's like, really? I, he darns his own damn socks when he gets a hole in them. So, you know, there's that. So yeah. But anyway, so I was I was laughing because I knew you would get a kick out of that. I'm like, oh, I think I got to get rid of them. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're going. Yeah. Uh, okay, tomorrow I will be on the Chris Salcedo Show. Monday's uh, Monday's hit with Michael Reagan was moved to tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, four, I think it's 4.45. So between 4.30 and 5 o'clock, um, you know, put the, uh, Ron says there's goop for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That steel stuff you see, the black stuff with that phone. That's right. Spray seal stuff at the bottom of the shoe. It's what is that stuff little... called? Uh, something seal? What's that called? Oh, um, um, oh God. Uh, it'll come to me. You know, we'll be off the show. It'll it'll click right into Yeah, something seal. Knows what anyway, what's it called? Al the said guy does neurotic. a boat. He does everything. Yeah. Right. That's not neurotic, Al. I'm saving money. All right. The left shoe is still perfectly good. <laughs> Um, flex seal, flex seal, flex seal, flex seal. Flex seal. Flex seal. Flex seal. Yay. You need to flex seal your shoe. That's what you gotta do. Inside and out. So you get it up the steel on both sides, right? I mean, you know, you want to meet there in the middle, you know? There you go. Uh, let's <laughs> see. What does this say? Flex seal. Yeah, I yeah, got it, Rachel. Thank Thanks, you. Rachel. Um, so anyway, so tomorrow I'll be on the Chris Alcedo show, uh, about between four 30 and five o'clock Eastern time with Michael Reagan. It's supposed to be Mondays with Mike and Mary, but it will be Wednesdays. Wednesday, just this week. Uh, and then we're going to try, as I said, to do Thursday's night podcast, 715 Eastern time. You watch on Getter and YouTube. Uh, and it, that is our political podcast. Again, doing it, going to try to do it from a hotel. Right. Bear with me. If it doesn't happen, I apologize now. All right. But um, I'll, I'm going to try to do it as best I can. Uh, also, the audio from this podcast will be up on Apple Podcasts and Spotify within 24 hours. We've been getting pretty good at that, James, knock on wood. Uh-oh, knock on wood. We've been getting pretty good uh, with uh, with getting it, getting it up there within 24 hours. So you can just go to uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, 
and just look for Mary Walter Radio or Life with Mary Walter and uh, it, it'll pop up. So that's that. All right, babe, we're out of here. Out. All right, we're out of here. Everybody have a fantastic uh, day and we'll see, we'll see you like in 48 hours. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Hold on, I gotta go. Nobody's even sure this is rock and roll